but today we're going to talk about probability and uh, genetic genealogy. This was requested by Greg Clark, and unfortunately, he can't be here today, so he will be on the replay. Hi, Greg, on the replay. But um, I know that when we do a lot of genealogy research, um, the, oh yeah, why don't we do that? When, okay. When we do a lot of genetic genealogy research, if we don't understand probability, we don't get very far. So we are going to have Andy use his whiteboard. Oh, there's Greg. I'm so glad you're here, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you made it. All right. All right. Whiteboard so, time. This is... This is math today. So if you guys don't like math, then you're not going to like this video. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll, I'll help you like math. So we're going to be talking about some different words. Probability. Probability. Odds. So for those gamblers out there, you know, you might have heard of odds. Um, what's the other thing? Um, Statistics? No, no. Percentages? There. Likely. Likelihood. Okay. Now, each of these words means something different, but we're not in a statistics course or anything like that. So for the sake of today, pretend like anytime you hear one of these, we're talking about the same thing almost. Because while each of these means something different, they are all interrelated. And so to simplify things, we're just going to pretend like they're all the same thing for right now. And if that doesn't make sense, that's okay. So let's start off with genealogy. And let's start off with something simple and we'll work our way up to something more complex. All right. So you have a child. And Devin, what sex was your first child? Female. Okay, so you had a female. Now, what is the probability of having a female? Do you know? 50-50? Well, yeah, actually, <laughs> well, close. It's, it's actually not quite 50%. Really, if you look at the statistics, it's really like 49.99%, which is pretty funny. And males are more likely. Whoops, I just drew a four there they're really like 50.01% likelihood of having a male child. And just as a nice little evolutionary reasoning before for this is it's because males die a whole lot more than females. And so evolution produces more males. Now, for all practical purposes, we don't have to worry about that. It's really just 50-50 and that will get you the right answer most of the times. Okay. So, 50%. So if you don't know, when we were at the hospital there, we had no idea, right? I'm talking to you. Yes. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm at the hospital. You're at the hospital. We have no idea. There's a 50-50 shot. It could be male or female. Okay. Right? So 50-50 or another way of looking at that is one out of two. Okay. It might be written another way, one in two. There's lots of different ways that we can write this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is important when we get to the math part, because it's going to determine how we use that math to figure something else out. All right. So your second child, mm -hmm. what was your second child? Male. Male. What was the probability of him being a male? Does it remain the same because it's 50. equal chance? Yeah, because there's there's two possibilities here. So equal chance. So 50-50. Now, that seems pretty simple, generic, but let's go one step further. What is the probability that your first child was female and your second child was male? So now we're not just talking about one. We're saying, hey, we're saying first Female, second, male. I have no idea. You have no idea. I have no idea. Really? I, I don't. Okay, that's good. This is where the numbers start getting to be important. And you'll have to excuse me. I'm on tech, 
chat with tech support to try to figure out how I can improve this signal. Oh, why? What did you do to the signal? Well, uh, we'll talk about that later. Okay, so let's change colors. So this is actually really easy to do. What we can do is in this case, we multiply the probability of either one of these events happening. So there's a 50% chance of a female for the first child and a 50% chance of a male for the second child. And that equals 25%. So one in four families that have two or more children, their first child being female and their second child being male, 25% of them have that. You're not that unique. Okay. Okay. If you look at the other ways that we wrote this, if we do one out of two times one out of two, what you get is one out of four, which is 25%. Okay. All right. So let's go now to the next thing possibility. And we're going to say, what is the possibility or the probability of having a female and then a male? And then let's do another male because that's what we have. We just follow the exact same thing here. And what we end up with is 50% times 50% times 50%. What does that equal? That equals 12.5%. Ah. Okay. Now let's throw a trick question in here for you. What if... I'm, a, I'm paying attention fully now. Sorry. I was trying to chat with tech support. What if we change this up? Instead of a female, a male, and then a male, what if we did this? A female, a male, and then a female. What would be the probability of that occurring? Well, I'm hoping <laughs> 50 times 50 times 49.9. No. Okay. 50, because that's the probability of having a female, uh -huh. right? Times 50, that's the probability of having a male. Uh -huh. And times 50, that's the probability of having another female. Oh, I thought there was a 49.9. I'm sorry. I told you that didn't matter for all this. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I, I'm. i It's the same. It's the exact same. Okay, it's we, the exact same. Debbie is smarter than I am. Good job. And Joe's of reality is yes, also smarter than I am. It's the exact same probability. And that is because each one of these events is completely independent of the other. Right. Because... Whether you had a girl first, mm -hmm. doesn't matter for your second one. Yeah. Your body is not saying, you know what? I popped out a girl, so we want to pop out a boy. Mm -hmm. No, it's this is this is a random thing as far as, you know, which egg and sperm meet together. And so it's the same. It is the same. If we change this up to male, female, female, Guess what? The exact same. In fact, any combination of these three, let's say female, 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 12 and a half percent. Okay. So for instance, let's take my family here. My family, we have me, myself, and three boys, male, 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 male. All right. Mm hmm and so what would be the percentage of that? What's the probability of that happening? 50, 50, 50, 50 times each other. That's right. Which Yay, I'm paying attention. You are paying attention, which means that this is 6.25%. So it's just having. We're just having each time. Okay. Okay. All right. So now this, okay. wait Hi. a second. This is, this is where now with statistics and probability, it's very important that you understand the question. Yeah, because I was going to say, uh, and? <laughs> and what does this got to do with genetic genealogy? What does this have to do with genetic genealogy? Well, there's lots of things that have to do with genetic genealogy. I mean, this is genetics. 
whether you're having four boys or nine girls or whatever. That it's doesn't genetics. help me figure out it, my that doesn't how I'm yet, related. But let's I mean because Brianne in Bergen says I have a cousin who shares 250 cinemorgans and my grandma is his great grandma's double first cousin. How does that help? Well, that's long down here. Okay? Long down We've got here. to understand some things first. Okay. So I've been asking right now, what's the probability of having this and then this and then this and then this? That's and correct. what we find is for four kids, it doesn't matter whether you say male, female, male, male, mm -hmm. whatever. It's always the same probability. Mm -hmm. Now let's ask another question. What's the probability of having four boys? What's probable? Okay, I don't see how that's different. Ah, that's different. I don't see how it's different. Okay, the difference here is if I say, what's the probability of having a male and then a male and then a male and then a male? So that's an order. That's an order, but it's a specific thing. That's 6.25%. Okay. If I say, what's the probability of having four boys? It's also 6.25%. Okay. Now, because would a male, female, male, male still be 6.25%? Yes. So yes. all of those combinations, all of those four combinations letters. of four letters are going to be 6.25%. Okay. So, so let how me, how is the question then different? Let me, oh, let saying. me, well, because we got to see what the, what the rest of the question is. If I say, and we're going to just use three to make it easier because four, as you'll see here, starts to get really big. So if we say, What's the different combinations we can have of three letters? We can have F, M, M. We can have M, F, M. We can have M, M, F. And then we can have F, F, M. F, M, F. Uh, we can have M, F, F. And F, F, F. Whoops, that was not an F on the end there. That was an M. Mm -hmm. F, F, F. Okay. I think that is all the combination. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I think that's all the combinations with three letters that we can have. Mm -hmm. Okay. So remember we said with each one of these, it was what? 12 and a half percent. Yeah. Right. So 12 12.5, 12.5, 12.5, 12.5. 12.5, 12. Mm. 12. Are you seeing something? No, 12. I have a 5, question from Ribble. 12.5. Okay, Ribble, so. Oh, you asked my question, Mr. 12.5er. Ribble Gibble has a question that it needs to be worked in. I just need to know when to ask it. What's the question? <laughs> no. Okay, that's that's good. We'll wait on that. I know, we'll but wait we on can't that. wait too long. We won't wait too long. Disappears. So if I say... And you're looking at this right here. What's the probability of having all three boys? See, I'm confused because I don't know if I should say 12.5. Yes, that's what you should say. <laughs> what was my what was my I other don't know. or? What was your or? My or was you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one out of seven. Well, there's eight. There's one, eight? two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm sorry. Because what is 12.5 times eight? I'm guessing a hundred. Yes. So what, <laughs> if, if I say, okay. if you have three kids, what's the probability of having three kids? It would be 100%. Okay. Now, if we're talking about boys and girls, I say, what's the probability of having three boys? You say? What? 12.5. 12.5. If I say, what's the probability of having one girl and two boys? What are you going to say? 12.5%. No, you're wrong. Because what? if we look here, here is one girl and two boys. Here is one girl and two boys. Here is one girl and two boys. And so we actually have to add all three of those probabilities together. You asked me a trick question. No, I didn't. I asked you one girl and two boys. Each one of those families has one girl and two boys. It's 37 and a half percent. Someone is a smarty pants in the chat. Yes, and they put formulas. They're hurting my brain. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. I, this, that's why it's math. Dose of reality. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now, if I asked you to, if I said, what is the probability of having at least one girl in your family? 
then of three kids. You're going to have to do all the multiplying, but taking out the ones that, well, just the MM, because it has no one girl. So if you have three kids, the probability of having at least one girl is 87.5%. Uh huh. Okay. So you see how the question that you're asking matters and understanding what that question is. Yes. Okay. And Kevin is excited that his problem stat classes are good for something other than blackjack. But blackjack and poker are really good things for statistics. <laughs> if you want to win at blackjack and poker, you better understand statistics. No, so okay. we're going to go now. We're still going to be using math. Mm -hmm. We're going to go now to something else that probably everybody that took biology remembers. Okay. okay, so long as it gets, oh, Punnett Square, the Yeah, you, you got Mickey. it, Punnett um, Squares. It's punk? No, Punnett. Oh. Not punk, not punky well, squares, Punnett Squares. What did I say at first? I don't even remember. I thought I was trying to say Punnett, Punnett, Punnett yeah, whatever. You're, yeah, all right, so let me, let me draw a bigger box here. Okay. Is that how you spell it? P-U-N-N-E-T-T, Mr. Punnett. P-U-N-N. E T T. Oh. oh. Okay. So, what this has to do with how traits are passed on. So, we have two parents, a mother and a father, and they each have two copies of these genes that are then passed on. And so, this really works specifically for those that are coded for a individual trait. So, for instance, let's use red hair. Mm hmm. Okay, now red hair happens to be a... R, little r? We'll use R, little r. But in this case, big R does not mean red hair. Oh. Big R, big r means anything but red hair. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start with somebody who is a big R and a little r. Now that does not mean they have red hair because... This is where the red hair comes from, the little r, but it's recessive, meaning you need to have two copies of it to have this. So you can be a carrier like this person. We'll say that this is the father up top and this is the mother on the side. We'll say the mother has red hair. Mm -hmm. So she is little r, little r. Oh, okay. Little r, little r is the red. Yes. Little r, little r is the red. Oh, man. So this box represents what their children could have. Big R, little R, two little R, lots of little R's. There's only one big R. Oh, sorry, my bad. I didn't bring that. Okay. So by looking at this now, what we can see is we can see, well, is this people going to have red hair? Big R, little R? Did you say two little R's? You need two little R's for red hair. No. Okay. This one? Okay, so we're going to color this red over here. They have they are redheads. What about this one? Yes. Redheads. 50-50. Okay, 50-50. Joaquin. We'll see. It's an M, and I don't know if it's Joaquin or Joaquin. Joaquin. Oh, Joaquin. You have a lovely name, Mr. So, yes, this is 50-50. So if you are a carrier and you are having kids with somebody who does have red hair, 50% of your kids on average, mm -hmm. or actually a probability of 50% will have red hair. So if you had a hundred kids, mm -hmm. roughly 50 of them would have red hair. Now, as we just saw mm -hmm. with boys and girls, this works the same way because most people don't have a hundred kids. So mm -hmm. they can't you know, run the statistics out like that. Man. They might have two kids or three kids. Mm -hmm. In which case, you can't have one and a half with red hair. No. And it's possible that you don't have any with red hair. So in this case, we have a 50-50. And we just saw that with three kids, mm -hmm. what was the possibility of one of them being a female? Three kids, one of them female. 12.5%? No, that's at the least three. one of them being a, at least one of them being female. 87 and a half percent. So if you have three kids mm -hmm. and you're a carrier and your spouse is a redhead, then there is an 87 and a half percent chance that at least one of your kids has red hair. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool, right? But let's change up these numbers because 
it's not always the case. For instance, we knew a family. Let me erase this. This was the, uh, I'm trying to remember their last name and I can't even remember that now. They did not have red hair. Both of them were not redheads. But they had three kids. All three of their kids were redheads. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's go through this. So we have big R, big R, big R, little R. 75, 25. Big R, little R, R, R. Yeah. All right. So this is a 75, 25 as far as whether they're going to have red hair or not. Okay. So we've got a 75, 25 mm -hmm. with red hair. But what we also have is we have a 75, 25 who are at least carriers or have red hair. In other words, this person has red hair. Oh, oh, okay. We know that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. But these two people are carriers just like both of their parents. Mm -hmm. So if you and your spouse are both carriers of red hair, you can still have red-haired children, even though neither one of you has red hair. It's probably not going to be all your children. Mm -hmm. In this case, with this one family that we had, all three of their kids had red hair. That's unusual. But really? it's not like outlandishly unusual. Mm -hmm. We're not going to calculate the, the probability of that. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, looking at this, it's just a matter of instead of using that 50-50, mm -hmm. using 25. Mm -hmm. You can click on that. Go can quick. I click on that? Uh-huh. Make it go away. That Thank go you. away? Yes, please. Thank oh, you. why? Because I need it to go away. Okay. Yeah, keep going. Okay. Behind so, the scenes, sorry. Behind the scenes, yes. All right, so let's go and let's look at the same thing with red hair, only a little bit different. Because that's the nice thing about these Punnett squares, is we can find out all sorts of possibilities here. So are we going to get to that complicated question that gentleman had? Earlier? We will. We will. I better go find it. <laughs> R, K, and big R. So we have somebody who's not a carrier. Like myself, I'm not a carrier. You're not. I'm not. And then we have somebody, let's say that I married a redhead, even though I didn't. I have a little red. But you're not, gen genetically, you're not a redhead. <sighs> Sorry. I'm not, but I do have red. So what do you think is going to happen with this pairing? We've got a redhead marrying a non-carrier. You're going to have all carriers. And all of your kids, 100% of your kids are going to be carriers. Exactly. So even though one person was a redhead, the other person had nothing, every single one of their kids are going to be carriers. None of their kids are going to be redheads. And so this is how, when you're looking at some of your family traits, you might see some of these traits skip a generation. And, and I use red hair usually because it's uh, definable. very definable. It is based off this single genetic trait. And so you might see that, hey, your great, great grandma had red hair and you had red hair, but the two generations in between didn't have red hair. And that's because they were carriers during that time, bringing that gene on to you. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm learning how to say good morning in Portuguese. Okay. <laughs> so ribble rabble. Ribble gibble. Ribble gibble. Ribble gibble. Okay. Let me go see if I can find there. I just saw it a second ago because I was trying. Some of the comments disappear. Mm -hmm. There it is. Don't all boys or girls run in the family genetically predisposed? All right. So this is a good question. Now, if we were talking about red hair, I would say yes, because that is based on genes. When we're talking about all boys or all girls, the answer from everything I've read is no, because this is completely random. Now, you might see that 
hey, your family has all boys and your dad's family has all boys and your grandpa's family has all boys, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you're thinking this, this might be this genetic predisposition. Well, this gets us to the next part. Okay. So we'll just use families of three boys. What was the probability of that happening? Families with three boys. Yes. Three M's. Three M's. Photographic memory, 12.5. Good. So we have 12.5% of all boys, and I'm just using a family of three. Okay. 12.5%. So if we look at that family and then we look at, well, what about the, your parents, your dad's family also having all boys? Mm -hmm. Well, that's also 12.5%, right? Well, what's the probability of both of those families together having all boys? Well, they can't mate, so I have no idea. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> In essence, and this is this is where, you know, we can just go and simply we can say, uh, whoops, 12 point, let me get this right, 0.125 times 0.125, that equals 1.5%. Again, what's the question? This is, so this is your family. Yeah. This is your dad's family. Oh, okay. So what's the possible probability of those two together only having all boys? Uh, okay. But is that, I guess, the question that you're asking well, that's prior a, that's to me having my three boys? If yes. I, I had the three boys. Yes, yes. Okay. So. Because, I mean, that didn't make any sense. Sorry. That's, <laughs> that's the great thing about probability and statistics in this is some things if you ask it wrong, don't make good sense. Wow. Sorry. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, this is perfect. We will use that, Michael, here in just a second. All right. So 12.5 <laughs> times 12.5, what that ends up being is, you know what? There's only a 1%, 1 1.5% probability mm -hmm. of, of that happening. Okay. Okay. And you might think, wow, that's just, <laughs> that must mean that it's, you know, genetically predispositioned. Mm -hmm. Except... How many families are we talking about? Two. Well, here, but how many possible, how many families are we looking at throughout the whole world? More than two. Way more than two. Um, Don't ask me a hard question. So there are, we're going to say 7 billion people in the world right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That looks like 7 billion. And there's, you know, four, five people now per family. So we're looking at, Roughly a hundred and no, I'm sorry, 1.4 billion. Okay, 1.4 billion, and let's times that families times that by whoops, back up times that by 0 0.015. There is 21 million families in the world today. If everybody had three kids, but everybody doesn't. But if everybody did have three kids, there's 21 million families in the world today where both. The father's family had only boys and his son's family had only boys. And that's just the nice thing about statistics with big numbers is because of these big, huge numbers, what seems like it's extremely rare, you're going to see happening lots of times simply because we're talking about gigantic, enormous numbers. Okay. All right. So. It's been 30 minutes and I still want to know how this relates to our DNA research. Well, how it relates to our DNA research. Well, first we got to do Waylon's comment. Oh. Michael Waylon. 14 children, only the last one was female. That's, you know, somewhat rare because if we uh, calculate that to have 13 boys in a row, whoops, we would need to go with 0.5 to the 13th. Oh, wow. And let's Our make that a percentage. Like to see how you did the that to the thirteenth. Yeah, that would be point zero 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 one percent of all families with fourteen kids. The first thirteen were boys. Okay, that's pretty rare. You're probably not going to find too many other families like that because the number of families with fourteen kids in the world is not that large. Um. 
but that doesn't mean you're not going to find another family mm -hmm. like that. All right, so let's go and let's talk something about DNA. So what is a centimorgan? A centimorgan. Is that a segment of DNA? Well, that's the segments, only thing that's coming to mind. Segments right now. are made up of centimorgans. So a little a, is it the A G comma set? No. I haven't read this in a while. <laughs> I know it's something we all share with other people. Draw the little bar. Okay. And show me what the heck. A centimorgan. I'm sorry, guys. I'm failing you miserably. Think of a centimorgan as a 1% probability of a recombination. So it's not even on, it's, it's not on your well, it's, bar. It is, but it's, it's, it's a very funky measurement. And no wonder everybody in the comments always gets confused about Santa Morgan. So let's take this here, right here. Yeah, you got to draw the bar. Here is a bar. Mm -hmm. And this is a bar of DNA that was passed on to you. And right here oh. was a, right there was a recombination mm -hmm. near the beginning. Mm -hmm. So, where is the next recombination happening? What is the probability? That is what Ascent Morgans are telling you for this segment. Okay. So, for instance, if this right here was the maternal, whoop, let me get that color right. We'll say this right here was the maternal part of that segment, mm -hmm. which means now we're starting that paternal part of that segment. Mm -hmm. That looks like visual phasing. Yeah. So how far and how much? So let's just color in a segment. What's the probability that that segment is that long? And let's say that this is. Let me get that. Let's say that that is 20 centimorgans. Mm -hmm. What's the probability of that segment being 20 centimorgans? I don't know. Well, let's look back up at centimorgans. I'm looking at centimorgans. So centimorgans is 1% probability of recombination. So 20%? 20, that would be 20%. Okay. I didn't know how to read that. Yeah. Awesome. That would be 20%. Okay. Okay. Are those stirs? Are those stirs? No. These are we're talking snips to make up segments here. So let's look at this, knowing that a centimorgan is equal to one percent, which means it's also equal to one hundred percent minus ninety-nine percent. Is okay. way to look at it, okay? Yeah. All right. So if I ask the question, what is the probability mm -hmm. of receiving a 100 centimorgan segment from my grandfather? Okay. <laughs> See, okay. now we're now we're getting write complicated. It down. Okay. So because I'm a visual mather. No, you don't what? have to write the whole thing out, just the notation. So you want to know the probability that you get 100 centimorgans. I get a 100 centimorgan segment uh -huh. from my grandfather. Well, if you had that little bar thing, you said the 20 equal, so wouldn't 100%, but that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. You're right. Okay. Because it's hey, not right. Hey, see, Debbie and I were sharing the same. You're brain sharing brain. the same, and it's not right. Thank you, Debbie. Because then, we're wrong together. What is the probability of me receiving a 200 centimorgan segment from my grandfather? Well, again, based on what you led me to believe earlier, <laughs> it would be 200. But now you Nine, have the 100 percent. Now I'm looking at 100 minus 99, and I'm mm. going, there's something there. There is. But I don't know. 
there is. And this is this is why it's it can be very confusing. Thank and, you. And can think about it. Thank okay? you, Debbie, for being on team clueless with me. That's okay. I, I'm only assuming you're clueless because we have the same answer. All right. So if a centimorgan is one percent chance of a recombination, uh -huh. another way to look at that is it's a 99% chance of no recombination. So if I go one centimorgan, I have a 1% chance that a recombination is going to happen. And I have a 99% chance of no recombination happening. Okay. So if we want to go from one centimorgan up to 100 centimorgans, we have 100 spots do we have no... to multiply the ones and the 99? Oh, yeah, you're getting there. But then there. it's just going to, but see, one times one times one, no matter how many times you times one, it's just a one. So that makes no sense, right? That makes absolutely So no it sense. can't be that. Okay. Good. So. But a 99 times a 99, 99, 99, I oh, don't okay. know how to do that. All right. You don't know how to do that, but. We, I mean, there's a calculator. What we know is, we know that if we times 1% times 1% times 1%, we're going to get a really, 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 really tiny number. No. 1% times 1% times 1%. What's 1% of 1%? Oh, wait, there's zeros involved. There's going to be a bunch of zeros involved. Oh, whoopsie. There's going to be I like, oh. I'm sorry. I was thinking of the whole number one, and I exclude the unit symbol thing like my kids love to do, and I always tell them the units matter. I'm sorry. Yes, yes. I so everybody we again. know that that makes no sense. Why? Because we've all seen that almost all of us have at least a 100 centimorgan segment from one of our grandparents. Okay, so we know intuitively from that, from looking at DNA, this is really common. And so we can say right off, okay, that's not what we need to be using to calculate this. Okay. We so need to be using this 99%. 99%. Yes. So and what we need to do. Oh, so after Tane has a recommendation for me. What's that? That one. Okay. For small stuff. In this case, what we need to do is we need to do 0 .0, 0 0.99. And then we're going to do it to whatever One, power we're 100. looking at. 100. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And that calculator has to do. And that's where we go over to the calculator. So we go, let me clear all. Grandfather, from your grandfather on a chromosome. If we're just talking about the specific chromosome, that's fine. Because you said well, a, set, a well, centimorgan. I did. Are you Macking them across multiple centimeters. I'm just talking about one segment on one chromosome. So I was right. Yeah. You corrected me. Yes, I did. All right. <laughs> Yay. So let's actually go over here to Jedmatch. I didn't spell Jedmatch right. Yeah, you didn't. Because I'm wondering, I'm wondering. So ancestry, and this may be off topic, but that's why you're here. Um ancestry now has the how you're related in this relationship thing and they have this percentage on the side that says 87 percent ants less than one percent fifth cousin one time removed actually they don't have fifth cousin one time removed fourth cousin one time removed and is that this you have got it babe oh man I'm not the, well, I'm still the Debbie Downer of DNA, what, but at least I'm not the completely clueless. You know, what that is doing is that is actually combining all these different things. So I'm going to do um, graphics and position. We'll do that. <laughs> and we'll prevent the hard breaks. So this is between me and my grandfather. So look at that. Right smack dab on chromosome number one, I've got a 100 centimorgan segment. No, that's more than 100. But it's yeah. more. Look at that. On chromosome number four, I have almost 100. You have less. On five, I have 126. On six, I have 194. Yes. So 194 centimorgans. That's 200. That's like a bigger. Yeah, that's much bigger. What is what is the possibility of 194? Well, let's go here and let's do 0.99. And we do that to the 194 power. That's still a 14% chance that I can have that, which makes sense because I have one. Well, and then you have all the, all of those together, and because you have so many, that should indicate a close relative? Question mark? Question yes, mark? yes, yes, yes. And so that is that is exactly what 
those oh, percentages are doing mm -hmm. when they say, hey, 87% chance this is your grandfather. Mm -hmm. Well, they're looking at things like this, mm -hmm. basically, hey, what's the probability on these long segments? Mm -hmm. Because you can only have, you know, so much recombination each generation. Mm -hmm. And and how much of that adds up to give you an idea of, hey, whether this is a grandfather or a uncle okay. or a half sibling or okay. something like that. And so this plays into your video from Wednesday of small segments. This does. Ooh, ooh, you are like but, hitting it off. But should I want to work in our super chat? Just a second. Okay. Let me let me do this with small I'm just segments. I'm telling you, we got a hard deadline, so. So we've got this seven centimorgan segment. Mm -hmm. Okay. And what in the video I said is, hey, if this gets passed down to the next generation as seven centimorgans, and then down to the next generation as seven centimorgans, what's the possibility of that happening? I have no idea. I need you to tell me. My brain well, hurts. We got to first figure out. 0.99 to the seventh, right? Oh, because it's 7%. Mm -hmm. And you have, you're using the 99 to represent the seven, but then you have to do it to the seven. Mm -hmm. oh, but then what I went and I showed, I also showed that it is much more likely in that video, and I'm not going to re rehash that right. video. <laughs> that this seven centimorgan is just one possibility. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's much more likely that this happens, or this, or this, or this, or this, or mm -hmm. this happens, mm -hmm. which all put it much below the threshold that it's going to say that hey, this is even a segment, and okay. so it's never going to report that. Okay. 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 So it doesn't All mean right. that it can't happen. Okay. But it's going to be much, so much what less likely. Is the takeaway for those of us who are their brains hurting? What is the takeaway? What's when the takeaway? We see, when we see small segments, when we see ethnicity percentages, when we see the probability that this is a second cousin, what is the takeaway with probability and how does that? Help us with our research. All right. So the, the takeaway with probability here really has to do with segment size. Okay. Bigger segments are better. Okay. Bigger is better. Bigger is better. And because the bigger, the better, it, it increases the likelihood of close relationship. That's correct. Okay. Um, because, so, for instance, let's just say, let's say that we're looking at a, a fourth cousin mm -hmm. or a fifth cousin. Mm -hmm. All right. If we look at, um, let switch. me go over to DNA Painter. Okay. Make sure you switch. I will switch. I did that all morning while I was uh, recording. Like, Arr! so if we look over here uh -huh. at a fourth or fifth cousin here. So this is all probability. This is, yeah, this is, this is because if I put in, you know, 195 centimorgans there, yeah. what are those? Those are probabilities, yeah, relationship your... probabilities. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Anyway. So if I'm looking at, reset that, fourth or fifth cousins, mm -hmm. on average, mm -hmm. on average, 35 centimorgans and 25 centimorgans. If I have somebody who's a fifth cousin that shares 25 centimorgans with me in one great big segment, mm -hmm. to me, that's better than a fifth cousin who shares two segments, one that's 10 and one that's 15, mm -hmm. even though it's still 25 centimorgans. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to look at the one that shares the big segment first. Gotcha. So when you're looking at the matches, that's why it's good when companies not only tell you how much centimorgans you share, but what the largest segment is. Mm -hmm. When you have a bunch of people that are together that are roughly the same relationship, well, look at the ones with the largest segment first. Mm -hmm. and they're the ones that are going to be more likely, mm -hmm. not always, more likely to be close or related to you. Okay. And then um, the, because a lot of, a lot of questions come in our comments of, I am related to my third cousin. 
how come I don't show up as third cousin? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent question. If you have other questions, throw them at me because I'm pulling these out of my memory. All right. So I'm related to my third cousin. I have a third cousin. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't show up as third cousin. It shows up as a fourth cousin or a fifth cousin or something like that. Maybe. Or not at all. Or not at all. Mm -hmm. All right. So one, we have to make an assumption here. Okay. First assumption you have to make is that they took a DNA test. Well, yes, no. but <laughs> you are actually related. Okay. In other words, there's not an NPE going on between yourself and your great grandparent and them and their great grandparent. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we have to make that assumption first to try to understand this DNA. Mm -hmm. Now I say that because you should never make that assumption. Mm -hmm. You should show whether or not that is the case here, mm -hmm. but why are they not showing up? So let's take this in two parts. One, showing up as smaller than a third cousin mm -hmm. or showing up not at all. Because 73, okay, that's 73 centimorgans, right? 73 centimorgans, yes. And there's a, a, a large amount of centimorgans. They're saying they should have between zero, we'll see, but there's a zero. A zero and uh -huh. centimorgan. So they could show up with nothing. That yes? is exactly right. There's no guarantee they show up exactly with something. Exactly right. So because of inheritance? Yeah. Okay. So just because of this this randomness and the probability of passing that down. Now, if you watch if you watch that video about those small segments, you'll see how, hey, as you get to smaller and smaller, it's much more likely that that is going to go away because if it is, let's say for instance, a seven centimorgan segment, if that gets divided up into anything, it's going away. Mm -hmm. If it doesn't get passed down at all, it goes away. The only way a seven centimorgan segment stays with you is if it gets passed down completely as a seven centimorgan segment. Okay. Okay. Um, so in this case, if you actually only share 35 or 25 centimorgans with this, it falls into this average of what a fourth or fifth cousin, and so it may be reported as such. Mm -hmm. If you happen to not share any DNA with this third cousin, mm -hmm. that's also within the realm of possibility. Okay. And so it wouldn't show you as a third cousin at all. Well, I was okay. I, well, I, I want to make sure we wrap this up soon because I don't. I want to make sure we get to Strange's question. Okay. But um, I was looking at my dad's cousin. So my first cousin once removed, his first cousin, and they had matches that I didn't have. And when we looked at the trees and did all that stuff, they were from my Joseph Geisler that I wrote the book about. Mm -hmm. um, they're, and they're not from the half line. They're from the, the dual line. And, but they don't show up as my cousin. Right. But they show up as your brother's cousin. No, they showed up at my first cousin once removed cousin. Okay. Uh, but they're how far removed from you? Are they third cousins or fourth cousins or fifth cousins? Uh, they're in the third to fourth range. Okay. So they're in the fourth, third to fourth range. So you happen to have just fallen into this zero where you didn't you both didn't share get the same dna from them okay. but this is why looking at these third and fourth and fifth cousins by yourself mm -hmm. can be problematic yeah because once you get to third cousins third cousins you only share dna with 90 percent of them mm -hmm. so that means there's 10 percent of your third cousins you don't share DNA with. Okay, so they fall in ninety seven. Okay, so they fall and in. that's probability again. That's based probability on again. Gadget. When we get to fourth cousins, you only share DNA with half of them. Gotcha. When we get to fifth cousins, gotcha. It's down to fifteen percent. So, fifth cousins, all the matches that you're seeing that are fifth cousins, that's only fifteen percent of your fifth cousins. There mm. are four, five, six times as many more people out there that you're actually related to, you just don't share any DNA with at that level. Gotcha. So that's why it's important to 
Get your tested. siblings tested gotcha. because they're going to have some matches that you don't have. Mm -hmm. Get your cousins tested because they're going to have matches that you don't have yes. that all fall into this. Gotcha. Okay. So, does that make sense now? That makes great sense. Are we awesome. ready for Strange's We question? are ready for Strange's question. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your super chat. I, we really appreciate those who support us in this way. So how does my mother have 1% Nigerian DNA? And then the rest is a mix of Western European. And I have a cousin who is 50% Nigerian and 50% French. Okay. All right. So and this is probably going to be our last question of the day. But if you have follow-up questions on this one, then we will do it. If you have other questions, put them in the main comment, not the chat, the main comments of this video. I'll add it to our queue. I'm keeping a master queue to make sure that we are answering these types of questions and we will get back to you for sure. So, <laughs> okay. Oh, you also said you would do this one. So I guess there are two, you did promise that you'd come back to Bri Bri Brianna. I think that, yeah, that one we said you would do. All right. So here's strange down here. Mm -hmm. Oh, whoops. I'm not showing you my chart that I've just done. <laughs> no, you didn't. But that's okay. But no, I, I drew this out. Okay. So I'm going to take that off the so, screen. Well, but I need to have, I need you to have it that on there, for there a while? so I can see okay. stuff. No problem. Okay. So Strange's mother here is 1% Nigerian. And that's the one that we're, we're concerned with here. Mm -hmm. But Strange has a cousin that is 50% Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Okay. So how is it that this is possible through DNA? Okay. And here is the key. Here is the key is we always have to take into account where people got their DNA from. So there's actually some, you know, only if, since this is only two generations really that we're looking at, there's really only one major way that I can see, although, um, with, uh, you know, some of the the ways that the company's calculated, there might be another. Okay, there's a follow-up when you're ready. I haven't even answered it yet. I know. But there's a... Oh, okay. These are marked as distant cousins as a DNA match. Okay, no problem here. No problem here then. Okay. So, I'm, so you're talking about distant cousins, which would be even further down this, this tree here. Okay. I'm going to do it with just first cousins and show you how this is possible. So Strange's first cousin is, we'll say is 50% Nigerian, but Strange's mother is only 1% Nigerian. All right. First thing to know is, is we don't care about Strange's dad in this case, because we're not talking about the DNA that Strange shares with this person. We're only talking about the DNA that Strange's mother shares. So in that sense, Strange, I'm sorry, we don't even worry about you and your DNA profile. We're worried about your mother. She's 1%. Now, she got her DNA from her parents. And if we're just using percentages by itself, then we'll say collectively that he got, the mother got 2% of, or the, the parents had roughly 2% which could easily divide it up into 1% over here and 1% over here, which is why you got 2%, okay? Well, that would mean also then that her mother's brother in this case, he also got roughly 1% Nigerian DNA. He wouldn't get the two? He might've. Mm -hmm. He could have. Okay. Maybe you'd get as much as three or four okay. percent, but it's going to be a very low percentage. Okay. The cousin, though, has 50%. So how? The other side. Ah, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. This person was most likely 100% Nigerian. Okay. Which means their kids are all 50% Nigerian at least. Mm -hmm. And so when we're, and that's just with first cousins, as we can see here. Mm -hmm. So let's say for instance, that all of the people that we were talking about, I'll color them in pink. All these people were 
nearly 100% European ancestry. By simply putting one person with Nigerian ancestry, you can be related at first cousin level to somebody with 50%. So by the time you get out to more distant, there's lots of these marriages in mm -hmm. that are contributing to that. And so... And then my other question then was, and this is a point Ascertain was bringing up, and that was um, much of West Africa was once ruled by France and Nigeria was once under British rule. So it's possible that there was different kinds of intermixing, even if somebody's from the same location and that could throw off the ethnicity percentage. Mm -hmm. My other question is, um, could it also be that in the reference database, they don't have that much Nigerian DNA? That is the other possibility here. Because if the reference database happens to match this person much better, mm -hmm. then they're going to report a much higher percentage of, of Nigerian. Now, this is, I think, in particular um, with, with, with really anybody from Sub-Saharan Africa, mm -hmm. because Sub-Saharan Africa, well, Africa is where humans developed. And only a small portion of those Africans left Africa, which means they brought their, their section of genetic material out of Africa. And that's what the rest of the world, everybody from Asia, everybody from Europe, everybody from Americas, is all related to that group of Africans who left Africa. Well, it wasn't a majority of the Africans that left Africa. It was actually a very small group of people. And so there wasn't as much genetic diversity as all the rest of Africa. And so just Africans in general have much more genetic diversity within them. And if your reference population doesn't account for all that genetic diversity, it's entirely possible to have people who are really pre predominantly from Africa but they're not represented within that reference population. And so they don't show up as that. Now, what would they show up as? It really all depends on how they're calculating that the rest of the reference population, it might show up as something else. Just a point of, what do they call it? Point of clarification, yes. points of whatever things. Um, Nigeria, as according to the 2020 white paper on ethnicity, um, there's only 520 people in Ancestry's database. Okay, and Nigeria, just as a country, me, has like 150 million people, 200 million people, something like that. I mean, it's a really populous country. And then France has uh, 1,700. So France is only like 50 million people. And they got 1,700 people to basically represent those 50 million people, whereas Nigeria only has got 500 people to represent 150 million. I, I don't, I'm just guessing off the top of my head from, from what my knowledge of uh, geography is. So it's really one tenth of the uh, representation in their database between France and Nigeria. And so those types of things can happen even with somewhat closely related people, but strange when you're talking about even more distant cousins, it's very, very possible to have cousins that are 50% Nigerian um, and only 1%. For instance, I don't have any African DNA from any of the companies I can see, but if you look at my matches, I'm related to some people who are 50% or 75% of African DNA. And that's because we share on the other side, on the European side, which we both have. Okay. So this is our last question. This is from... Bri Brina? Brina? Brina Bergen? Bergen? Brina Bergen? Okay. Um, I don't know if that's German. And if you say the I rather than the E first. So um, can you help me rationalize my cousin? He shares 250 son of Morgans with me. His great grandma was devil first cousins with my grandma. Okay. So you're talking his great grandma was double first cousin. Oh, so let's, let's go over to DNA painter again. All right. Great grandma. This is actually probably a, a somewhat easy because we're talking. Oops, that's a great great grandma. Whoops. Well, no, no, because we'd be sharing. We'd be sharing great great grandmas. Oh, great gram. His great grandma was double first cousins. Okay, yeah. All right. So this. 
again has to do with the randomness and the range that different um, people can share. So in this case, and I'm not sure here if we're talking about because I don't have I don't have the map there. And you're using grandma and great grandma. So in this case, it might actually be this one that we're talking about here. But the double first cousin means that you have twice as much. Mm -hmm. Okay, because you're getting it from both sides. Mm -hmm. So if we just take a doubling in some of these cases, we can see that, hey, if this person is really a first cousin once removed with you, well, that would be between 200 and 1800. Mm -hmm. 250 is within that. It's on the low end, mm -hmm. but it's within that. If we look at second cousins once removed, we'd go from 28 to 700. Well, 250 is well within that range. And for second cousins, from 80 to 1000. Once again, 250 is well within that range. Okay. So um, this is this is a case of where, hey, nailing down specifically what that relationship is and then seeing whether or not they fall within that, even if you do that doubling. Because mm -hmm. um, this, this person might even be talking about a third cousin, which would be between zero and 500. And so 250 is right smack in the middle mm -hmm. of where you would expect okay. that to be. Okay. So... That's that's how I'd rationalize that without uh, you know mapping it out. So what I would you know do for yourself is map out exactly what the relationship is, mm -hmm. and knowing that you are double cousins or that there's this double relationship, understand now that you need to, at some point within this uh, table, double the amount of DNA that you could possibly share, and see then whether or not what you share actually falls within that range. Perfect. All right. Well, thank you so much, everyone. Um, we hope that you She's enjoyed doing this. Switcher. Yeah, uh, we hope you enjoyed this discussion of probability. For those of you who are lost like I was, then um, that's all right. You can watch the replay. Leave lots of questions. That's how we can improve the next live stream. And we will try to figure out about how to solve the pixelation of the video. I did have a little Fun chit chat with the um, people over at StreamYards and they told me a suggestion and we'll try it out next time. So um, I do have some news. I hope it all comes out. It's in the early stages, but next Friday we should be having a bonus live stream because the folks over at Roots Magic are in big, big trouble. They released the uh, Roots Magic 8 for download for everybody. It is out of the community preview and that's good news. But they're in trouble because they promised to tell me a week in advance so that I can have some videos because a lot of people want to know what's going on and how you use it. And so, um, yeah, they're in big trouble. So they're going to make it up to us by coming on our live stream next Friday. It'll just be me at the helm. This dear old guy has a day job. He's an engineer by day and a YouTuber by night or every other Friday. And so we will see you next Friday with um, the programmers from Roots Magic. I'm looking forward to that. And then new, just to make life more challenging, Family Search just decided to overall overhaul its search page, and yes. people have been asking me about that. And I, I was just on it like two days ago, and it was just fine. And it's now live, and it's driving me nuts because I don't know where things are, and you don't either. So drop me lots and lots of questions. Send them at info at Devin Noel Lee. Uh, no, info <laughs> at Devin Noel Lee. That's not going to go anywhere. That one's that one's dead a long time ago. Info at familyhistoryfanatics.com. <laughs> Send me an email about. I don't know how to do this on Family Search. How do I do it again? I know a lot of people are complaining. Every time there's a change, people complain. Um, I don't know if it's going to be better or worse. Uh, I just was shocked when I looked at it. Uh, but ask me the questions that you want me to share.